you can tell this really sucks. Sucks big I am just rambling and I am wasting my time. So anyway. So the last thing I need to do before I get the differential under the car is to install the, the uh, diff mount. And I went ahead and got the, um, the factory, uh, the bushings uh, pressed out. And they're like, a, I think they're oil filled, but uh, they were, there was a few little cracks in them and I didn't want to take the risk of putting these back in the car. And, you know, I, I, like I've said 20 times, I, I don't plan on doing this, getting this diff out of the car anytime soon. So um, I got these pressed out. It took, I do have a shop press, a 12 ton shop press, and it, it did work. Um, they were quite rusted and it did leave some gouging inside the uh, mount, but I got those out. And what I'm gonna replace them with is these uh, polyurethane Super Pro bushings. And um, just reading around online, they seem to get good reviews. Also, they're significantly cheaper than trying to replace, I think a set of these is still cheaper than just one of the OE uh, bushings. So there's two flanges, one's thinner and one's thicker. The thicker one will be on the outside. And so when I press these in, it'll be advantageous to press the thinner flange in um, uh, through the outsides of the, uh, of the uh, mount. So I'll go ahead and press these in. The bushings came with their own um, grease, but I've got some of my own. So I've cleaned all the parts, make sure there is no uh, residual crap inside um, the housing, as well as the bushing. I've wiped it down. And basically I'm just gonna apply a liberal amount of this uh, grease and I'll put a link to the, in the description with all the the products that I've used here like I said these bushings were relatively cheap uh, compared to buying OE bushings so I applied a liberal coat of grease all over the bushing um, I got I put some around the just the outside edge of the the, the, the thinner flange on the bushing because that's the one we're going to press through it's a little grease to help it uh, get pressed in. And basically need to get everything lined up with the, with the jack. And this is just a, I think it's a service or a ball joint service kit, had some different size cups. And again, you want the thicker flange to be on the outside. So make sure that it's up and center everything as good as we can. All right, so I've got everything pressed in. Let's see if this will push in. It's gonna be real important to get everything centered because it'll keep doing that um, if we don't apply constant pressure. So I'm going to try to recenter everything the best I can. It probably doesn't help that this jack is, is kind of flimsy and it tends to, to twist a little bit under load, but eventually we'll get everything lined up. Well, at the rate I'm going, I'll be here and. 2020 trying to get this done. So I think the problem is there's just too much play in the damn frame. There's too much, there's, you know, this piece of jack just keeps moving. Um, and because this needs to go in just perfectly, it, just any little movement, you know, the frame twists, this twist, everything twists. Um, and it's really needing a lot of pressure to push that back in there. So I'm going to cut the camera off because I might say some cuss words and things I shouldn't say on the internet. And I'm gonna try to get this one pressed in. If I come up with a smart way to get this in, then I'll, I'll come back and show you guys the second one. I got the first bushing pressed in um, after using a block of wood to help kind of leverage it as it started to slip. Um, I've been working on this side, trying to do the same technique for like the last 15 minutes and it just keeps popping out. I actually had it pressed about halfway in and then I went to make an adjustment and it just popped right back out. So this is a very frustrating process because it is something that should just take a couple of minutes but 
I think this cheap Harbor Freight press has got too much play in it that it's it's making the job near impossible. And I've tried clamps and some other things that I've got, um, but this seems to be the most easy way for me to control it. Um, but I think using the block of wood is the right technique as long as you figure out which way it's starting to slide you can apply opposite pressure to try to get that that you know that where it's wanting to kick out you're trying to stop that so um, I'm gonna give it a try here and I think I've got everything about as lined up as I can get it so let's see Now I just need to press in these center bearings, which shouldn't be as difficult because it's, um, I think it'll go in pretty easy. I'm getting ready to put the diff back in so I needed I went ahead and replaced the clips that are on the on the drive shafts and I'll put the part numbers down in the description below um, replace both of those um, not too hard they just pop off and then pop the new ones on when I go to put the diff in I'm gonna have to be careful to try to get the the bolt in that holds the e-brake cables and I think what I'm gonna be able to do is, is slide it underneath the car and try to angle it first to get into the bolt holes that are on the PPS. So you got two here and two up there. So when I bring this in, my first focus is going to be to get it up far enough that I can clear the rear subframe, but also get over top of um, the PPF. Now, admittedly, taking the PPF off would sh certainly be the easiest thing. But for now, I need to try to get the rear diff slid underneath the car and start trying to jack it up into place. So just a quick update for you guys after some trial and error um, what I decided to do was take the mounting bracket off the top of the diff because that gave me some more wiggle room to actually get the diff in there and you know kind of rotate it and lift it in and get it up over the PPF and I, I just put it on my low profile jack slid it in there jacked it up to you know as high as I could go wrestled it up over the holes for the the PPF and then um, bolted it back in. The only thing I'm not happy about doing it this way is the four bolts that hold the mount to the diff. I, I torque them as much as I could by hand, but there's not a lot of clearance in there to get large, you know, ratchets or torque wrenches or anything like that. So I don't think I hit the 70 pounds that's required by the factory service manual, but I did put some blue Loctite on those. So hopefully they don't come loose. I went ahead and replaced all the hardware where the factory service manual said to, to replace. So um, there's four, uh, whatever these were, and one there. Um, these are kind of a one-time use nut, so they need to be replaced each time they're taken off. I suppose you could probably torque them with some blue Loctite or something to stop them from, because I, I guess they're a, they're kind of a, a torque limited nut or whatever. So anyway, doing this on the ground is a huge pain. It's just heavy hard to get it positioned. If you took the, the PPF off, 
which has four bolts all the way down with the transmission. You would have a much easier time getting this in, but you've got to get the whole car lifted up to get the PPF off completely because you got to take the drive shaft out, the full exhaust, support the transmission. It's a lot of extra steps. I've got the drive shaft connected. I need to go ahead and get my exhaust put back together. Then I got to get the axles popped back in. So um, really, that's all I've got left to do down here. So uh, that's that's pretty straightforward stuff. Never stop. I've been stressed out watching both these hands around the clock with my eyes wide trying to get the panorama shot whole world getting blurry to me answers getting lost so I watch my back and keep it moving to the front and remember that the world's yours do it how you want you've been waiting here for too long think it's time for you to move on realize that there's real lives and these real times will be strong I've been waiting all my life and it was right before my eyes watching all this time flip now I realize You know I've been waiting Time to shine just like a diamond. Yeah. When life is rough and I ain't with that funny stuff, I use it all as motivation, but it's hard to have the patience. Have the patience. Watching time fly by Bye. might be the hardest thing I have to do in life. Bye. Frustrated that I ain't where I want to be yet, yeah. but I know that I'm gonna make it if I chase that check. Yes. Cause I done seen a time go by for too many years now when the stars were aligned. Cause I done seen a time go by. Yeah, I done seen the time go by. I've been waiting all my life And it was right before my eyes Watching all this time slip by Now I realize I've been waiting all my life So I didn't really go through a lot of any, well, really any of the details, um, putting the car back together. You know, pushing in the axles uh, was a little bit challenging. Um, you gotta get that clip that secures the axle to the diff lined up properly. Um, other than that, getting the diff in obviously was really difficult, at least doing it on the ground like I did. If I had a lift, it'd be a totally different story. Or when I get my lift, it'll be a totally different story. But uh, um, anyway, so that's that. My next video is probably gonna be on my lift install. Um, while I was working on the car, I actually found out that it's, it's going to be delayed another day. So it won't be here for two more days, supposedly. So it's like 3.30 in the morning. And so I'm definitely not going to start this up and wake everybody up. So um, I do need to let, you know, prime the fuel pump and get, uh, get, the, you know, get the car started. Let it sit for 20 minutes running, you know, make sure there's no fuel leaks. After that, I'll probably take it for a drive, make sure, you know, everything with the suspension and diff and everything's back to the way it's supposed to be. And obviously getting that diff up to temperature will make sure, you know, help us make sure we don't have any more leaks. So, you know, hopefully in the long run, having the fuel filter in a more accessible spot will be, you know, beneficial. 
Um, but like I said, I wouldn't go out of the, I wouldn't go out of my way to do that because you can replace the OE filter. Um, it is a little bit difficult, but way easier than all the stuff that I did to have to, to relocate that. So, um, you know, once I know the engine specs and the fuel flow and all that stuff that we'll end up having with the engine, then I'll be able to figure out what I want to do with my filtration system. Um, off camera, I did go ahead and get the uh, diff topped off. So it's full. I'm so damn tired. I, I can't really think. So um, I'm probably going to sign off with that. I um, hope you guys had a great holiday. I did release an RX-7 t-shirt. You know, I got a, an artist to draw a picture of the RX-7. So go check that out if you're interested in my Teespring link down below. Um, otherwise, I'll put a bunch of links to, the, to some of the parts and tools and whatever down below in case you're, you're thinking about doing this project. So that's all for me right now. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, if you like the content, please subscribe and uh, you know, give it a thumbs up and all that good stuff. And please leave comments down below. Um, I do read every comment and, and I try to answer those that, that uh, you know, have questions or, or comments that could have been helpful. So uh, anyway, thank you guys so much uh, for your support. Um, like I said, hopefully 2019 will be you know, a much bigger year. We'll be able to get the lift in here and hopefully speed up some projects that have been dragging out a little bit. And I really do need to look at the, uh, the engine and uh, see what's going on there. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.